I'm Rick from Cartridge Classic Cars. On this video, it's going to be a continuation and we're going to pick up where we left off on the 69 Firebird. On the last video, if you saw it, we did the trunk pan, the frame rails, and the floor pan, and this firewall. This video, the idea is we're going to get the side cowl pieces, the top, the dash. We're going to fill up this whole area and we're going to get our front subframe on and the rockers in place. We're going to weld some of it and we're not going to weld some other parts on there. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to try to go into detail why I go about building the car this way. This is not the only way to do it. It seems a little backwards since the whole back of the car is completely disassembled still and we're working on the front already, but I'll, get, I'll show you why. I think it's a little bit easier since the front end has a little more adjustment once we get that about where we want it. And I think on these F body cars from what I've messed with in the past, the front end seemed a little bit harder to align than the rear end. So like you said, we'll get to it. Also on a note, it is, when we put this car together, it may look pretty easy, but this is gonna be the second time it went together. Chase, my son and I, he's gonna help me assemble this car. We already had this whole car, fenders, hood, everything on this car with the front uh, front end except the dashboard and the reason we couldn't get the dashboard is because some of our bracings in place so minus the dashboard everything else has been on this car and we pulled pride and moved it so if you're watching this video and you're at home and you're struggling these parts don't fit perfect but what we're going to do i'm going to show you we're going to have to do some of this on this time we're going to pull against the frame jig we're going to yank down on some of these parts and i'm going to show you again like we've shown you in other videos why frame jigs are a big necessity and really help you out on building this car so let's get to the work we'll get the front clip under this car first and then we'll start assembling some of these parts so rolling in the subframe you saw we did in a previous video completely sandblast the subframe and I welded up the seams. We're using the crane here just because it's going to be a little bit easier versus the two of us lifting it up and trying to align the body holes. I'm using solid bushings at this point. You know GM back in the 60s they thought the rubber vibration damping bushings were the way to go but it's been proven time and time again that the solid bushings the rubber really didn't do anything for ride quality. So the solid bushing I would recommend it if you're replacing any of your first gen second gen f bodies the novas all the gm cars that have the subframes um, i think this is the way to go you'll see in the future um, we're also going to tie this into the real rear clip of the car another necessity i feel you need on these uh, first gen f body car so you see we got the first bolts lined in and then we were able to lower the crane down lifting up the back of the subframe and all four bolts went in really well turning our attention now we're going to start prepping out the rockers this was actually part of the disassembly phase how i do these cars is i told you in the intro of the video we had this whole car assembled hood fenders everything the whole entire front clip we were able to move stuff around and then what i start doing i start removing parts while i'm making notes on the parts and i go back through and i prep that part on the notes and I fix whatever problems or whatever holes need to be moved adjustments need to be made in the welding phase so this rocker actually just got removed off the car as I was removing it I was making the paint markers uh, marks as reference points know where I got drill holes what areas I'm gonna clean up and those are fresh in my head versus making the marks beforehand and it's sitting on the car you know X number of time and then I forget what actually happened so that's how I go about doing it maybe it'll help you if you do your similar fashion if not come up with a plan that works for you but you see right now I did drill the holes first um, for the rosette welds on the area that my spot welder can't get to I use a surface prep disc with a 120 grit and I got it down to bare metal Chase is over here and he's going to use the belt sander anywhere the surface prep disc can't get into. He's on there with a 120 grit also on the belt sander just reaching in. A lot of times with the drill bits too they're going to leave the sharp edges. You want to make sure you get all those off so your panels are going to sit flush with each other. Honestly, what you're looking at right now is the most time consuming part of the whole process as far as the car building metal work phase. You know, putting the panels together is lots of fun and everything, but really drilling all these holes 
getting everything that's going to be welded down to bare metal so you get good solid welds and there's no impurities in it is a necessity then taking wax and grease remover and cleaning everything out while also blowing all dirt and everything out and then using a good quality weld through primer is really key in this whole process you see here's some more work as the disassembly is happening on the driver side you see i'm marking my panel like i said earlier with the red marker i do squiggly lines where i want either chase or myself to go ahead and uh, get down to bare metal that's going to be areas that don't need holes because as you could see if you see in my videos in the past I have a spot welder those areas my spot welder will be able to take care of too but there's a lot of areas like these rockers that we can't get to both sides or I'm not confident enough in my spot welder going through three thick pieces of metal so I do like to weld certain areas I will come back to it and if the customer personally wants you know a spot weld looking car I'll come back to it and put my spot welder and go back over over it and then once the welds cleaned up and it'll look just like a factory car but like I said I trust my welds more than I do spot welders and that goes with the factory too when I rip these cars apart I know if I hit a weld how hard it is to rip apart or the spot welds you can usually rip around them Another thing I never discussed in any of my videos is really the airflow we're using right now. My compressor is 26 CFM and you really need a good compressor to be using Air Tools Force prep work. If not, try use a drill with a wire brush or some electric tools. But think about that before you get into this project. All right, so now that we got the front subframe on, we'll go ahead and start working on the rockers. And uh, the reason we put the subframe on is just to make sure the floor pan and firewall mounts, and it kind of helps push everything straight on the bottom, just in case our jig points were a little bit off. But you see how it bolted in on the solid mounts at this point, our jig is spot on. We didn't have to move any mounts or anything. So that's a really good sign. Our front clip is level with the car being level. Everything looks good and squared up so we're gonna go ahead like I said we're gonna move on to the rockers before we do that we gotta put our inner rocker bracing on so basically my son's gonna help me and we're just gonna stick them up here in a good area go ahead clamp that there hold up Blako. and we're just making it level with the rocker right here you see because what happens is our outer rocker sits on top of it go ahead, clamp it down all right, and put one right there. Now, we're not screwing anything in on this yet. We're not welding anything, and the rockers, we're gonna leave unwelded the whole time because we might have to adjust them. You're gonna see there's a good chance we might have to move the rockers forward or back based on our door gaps or our quarter gaps and everything else. So this, really, the rockers are, are basically our point of reference, but they're gonna be a movable point of reference. So you see our inner rocker sits right there. Uh, we got our outer rocker, and you see I put weld through primer on everything. We have our holes pre-drilled for this front frame support area, and the back holes already pre-drilled for our inner rockers. We are gonna put screws in there once everything's uh, fit and we're happy within the doors or on the car. So basically, you see, the other side, normally I did take this patch, we're gonna put this one on too, but this patch, if you don't need to do that, it sits right there if this thing's um, in place. So what you're gonna do, if that's on there, you would take your rocker and you would slide it up and behind it. And then right here in the back, kind of just lifting it up. And that's where that outer rocker goes. Now. I already know where about our outer rocker is because we have screw holes in it. So right there, go to clamp it, Chase. Clamp it right here. All right, so right there, since we were lucky enough to mess with this the first time, I know about where my rocker's gotta be. So we just put that on there. You can take that clamp out too. Uh, actually, hold it for a second. So I take it out now. And I'm actually going to drill a couple holes up here to pull the rocker in. I didn't do that yet. 
Now, with screwing this, it might seem obvious and you might want to put a screw on this side, but when you have to go remove it, you have all the panels on this side. So make sure you put your screws, obviously, think about it in the future where you can remove them. To save time on the video, we're gonna go ahead and just fast forward, time lapse through a lot of this repetitive stuff. There we go. So we had to help with the vice grips, but we got it pretty tight. We're gonna come back through and I'll go screw these things later. But you'll see, we'll just pull those in and then later we'll be able to weld it. And like I said, we also have holes. Don't forget this bracket right here. I put some holes underneath and what we'll do, we'll come in through the door jam when we're going to finish this car off and we know our rockers aren't moving and we're gonna weld them. So if we pre-drill our holes now, we could get to them. If we don't drill them now, it's gonna be a problem down the road. So here's the patch we're going to do. It was just rusted down behind there. We got all our weld through primer and everything. And I did a, the last video I did was actually on uh, patches. So watch that video if you're interested in patches. Really nothing to this. We just lined it up and we're going to throw this patch on there. We're again not going to weld this till we're happy with everything else. Just patching this lower panel was the way to go because it's just such a crucial piece to the whole front of the car and we were able to save a whole lot of time in keeping this area as a jig piece for the rest of the car. So the patch in this sense worked really well. All right, so for the bottom of the rocker now, you can't see it, but the rocker's kind of sagging a little bit. Most people sit there and just clamp the rocker on and it's kind of hung down a little bit. So when you put your doors on, the rocker gap on the bottom's gonna be kind of low. So what I like to try to do, I like to take the jack and we'll sit there, take a board under it and we're actually gonna lift this rocker up. Left the start the center. And now when I lift the rocker up, you should see this whole corner come up. And that's really going to help the door gaps on the bottom. Actually, and actually, I'm going to go to the bottom of the rocker just because I'm going to go a little bit past it. And again, I got my holes pre-lined so I know where they look good because the doors were already on this car. And what you could do, you could put your doors on the car, just clamp the bottom like we did the first time around, and then we're jacking up and down to get our desired door gap. So you see, it really did push that up. You can actually see the rocker kind of curving down at this point, but we'll get to that part of it. This is really something you could only do when the car is on a jig. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put one more screw just to pull this rocker up against this bottom inner structure piece. All right, so we see we got our patch on, we got our lower, our outer rockers on, everything's pretty much in a good spot. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple more screws on and just kind of you know, double check everything before we move it on to the next step. And I'll bring you back and we'll go over the next piece. All right, so now that we got our rockers on both sides, we're gonna go ahead and put the cow side pieces on. Right here is your reference point. I left all this on the original car, the pillar and everything. I was really lucky that this stuff was very solid compared to the rest of the car. So we're gonna use them as a reference. We're gonna take basically this lower vent channel right here, how it's dented in, and that's gonna sit right here. And that's set in our lower, basically this whole piece and the height of it. These pieces aren't manufactured perfect. You'll see it comes off and it's a little bit crooked up here. And I also had to trim a little bit off in the bottom. Not a huge deal, just letting you know, I wouldn't line this area up because then you're well off in other areas. So, and again, I pre-drilled a lot of these holes. Those are gonna go into there and there, weld through primer on everything that we're welding. And we're gonna come and we'll weld this inner bracket from the inside when everything's uh, all done. And that's gonna just make things easier. Preparation on everything is kind of key to make this part a little bit smoother. So, like I said, you can kind of see it basically falls right where it wants to be. I'm gonna take a pair of vice grips first and we're gonna clamp it. Right there, I'm gonna get some screws.
and we're basically the inside we're following this channel up and you can see it's kind of lined right up with the firewall that's the key here so right now we're just going to leave this piece on like this i'm going to actually wait because you're going to see the next part when we put the we're going to put the other side first and we'll do that in time lapse and then when we put the cow on that's the next piece then we'll come back through here and finish this up actually right before we put this on one more thing you see there's areas that have weld through primer and there are certain parts of this that do not have weld through primer the idea again pre-planning we're going to come back through everywhere there's bare metal and we're going to weld those first and then we're going to prime over it before we seal this up so if you see these going together in certain bare metal parts that's the reason why so let's get to it if you notice, I'm really not putting a lot of screws in these panels to let them kind of move when they all come together, and I'm definitely not welding anything up at all at this point. All right, so we're installing the cow panel, and a couple things on this one is, I'll show you in a second, but you're basically going to set it up in here, and we're trying to align it. It's been on this car, so the first time we put this cow panel on, it did not want to fit at all. These pieces are not rolled down at all. The idea behind the cow panel is it has to sit on top of these pieces. Water will come in through the top. There's an opening by the wiper area and it basically drains down this whole side and that's why it has to be over these side pieces. It'll run over and then down here and there's a hole in the bottom. Make sure you don't weld up the hole and you got good drainage. A lot of these cars rot away because leaves and debris sit in this area and then there's no where for the water to drain so it rusts everything out but so what we're doing we got it in there we want to get make sure it's centered on both sides looking at it my marks it looks like we're centered so him and vice grips we're going to clamp the front first basically getting our clamps as far forward as we can we want to pull it down and right there yeah let's move it a little bit forward more Gonna go for that right now. Let's go to the other side and clamp it, and I'll show you the front's gonna be the hard area to get down. So, again, we're kind of pulling it in and forward. All right, so now that's in. You see this piece goes in the front of the cowl panel and now we gotta get these bolts lined up. But you see, it's actually a lot better than it was the first time we put on there. It's sitting high on there. And if your car's not on a frame jig to pry and push, I mean, I can't push this down. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use a strap. So we're gonna take the strap and I wanna pull the front down. So we're basically gonna wrap the strap around the bottom of the frame jig. And see, that's going to give us a good solid pulling area. And we're going to hook up to something that's hopefully not going to bend. If it does, we'll fix it. And the idea is I got a screw hole right there and the bolt hole that I want lined up. So you see, we'll start ratcheting and you see how it's just pulling everything in. It's bending the top of this piece down and it's making everything really tight. So that's the idea behind it, right? One more. Right there is about where uh, I went too far. But you see the tension on this? And again, this is kind of a trial and error thing. I know where it's gotta be because I have the screw holes. Hand me the impact and the screw. So we'll throw our first screw in there. So it's kind of pull, you gotta pull this out while pushing it back. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our fender front support bolt and that's gonna hold the firewall in place. And actually, hand me another screw. I got a screw hole right there too as my reference point, which is lined up. So that side's in. Let's go ahead and release it and then do the other side.
hand me a screw. now. I right, come over here, Megan. All right, so now the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to basically work my way over here. We'll shoot some screws down this area and then we're going to start getting screws and clamps and working our way up here. Once we're done with that, I'm going to show you on the video our next step because we got to get the dashboard in and verify everything straight here. We didn't film under the dash, but this is how I got the inside brackets all screwed in all around and tied up against the area. So now that the whole cowl panels holding the A pillars and everything in place, we don't need these upper brace brackets. So that was the whole point of leaving them in there till I know everything's where I want to weld it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut them out right now. We're going to grind out the excess parts of them. I'm going to double check my measurements I have, you know, just to make sure. But all in all, once we test fit the dashboard, the dashboard's set in the width of this area anyway and you see it's tight going in I do have to pull out the two brackets going down to the steering column um, the Dynacorn cow panel it was the brackets are just pushed in way too far so what I did I took a monkey on the stick I tried to film it but the camera just quit recording and you see in this video how they're pulled out I just pushed them off the side pillars now that the dashboards completely assembled and test fit we're going to go ahead and remove it and we're going to start prepping the panel the dashboard is a perfect example of a panel that went in there's a couple parts of the panel that on its first fitment that just needs some minor tweak into it we've done that then we go ahead and remove the panel like i said you could see my marks where i gotta drill the holes out for my rosette welds and then on the back side there's areas i'm marking that's going to be ground down you see there's writing on the dashboard that's an area that's gonna have to be glued i'm doing this so i remember to glue this panel because sometimes you you know when you get in the zone you just start going and just start throwing parts on a car you throw something on the car and then you say man I forgot so these are just notes I write over the car if I have to take them off a little bit of lacquer thinner we'll wipe and clean that paint marker right off so now that we got everything in place we know the dashboard fits everything that I said and we put together we're happy with we're going to go ahead and start the welding process everything's screwed in you can't move anything so what I'm going to do I'm going to start in the center of the firewall to the cow panel and I'm kind of just pushing everything in place making sure I got a really good tight weld and I'm working my way towards the outside panels what I'm going to do I mean you could start under the dashboard pick a corner I do like to start in the front of the car at this point and just work myself back also this helps in the sense that I'm not going to miss succession of welds if I take it one step at a time I think about what I'm doing it's easier than you know you assemble the car and then you go back and found out you missed 10 welds but it's too late to grab them so this is the part of the process that's going to be a little different for me if you don't have a resistance welder at home. What I would do if I were you, you could go ahead and just continue your rosette holes down the side of the firewall. So when you put your cowl piece, you're just going to weld. As far as me, if we can get the resistance welder in place, well you see with this larger attachment where we'll get in there and it's just as easy as squeezing a trigger and letting the machine time out and then squeezing it again. That's how the factory does them. The reason we can't always use this is because you see certain panels are already put together on the car and they come pre-assembled. So the resistance weather can't reach in anywhere there's also times you're going to forget about where you can and can't do spot welds so just go back through with a flat tip drill bit and then you're able to re-drill welds not a big deal and then we'll go after once we're done welding this area we'll work our way down and get to those areas and re-weld it 
in theory, like I said earlier, since everything is screwed in place and there's no panel gaps anywhere, you can go ahead and really start welding anywhere on this car. This is more what I like to do. So what I'm doing, like I said earlier, I'm starting up front and you can see I'm working my way down on the upper cowl to side cowl vent area and then I'm just working my way down the other side. Once I finish up on this side of the car, what I do on two or three of these areas on the weld, same thing with the resistance what you saw. Before I pick up the resistance welder again, I'll go weld the other side of the car in the same areas. Then I'll use that attachment on the resistance welder and come back to this side of the car. Like I was just saying, now we throw a different attachment on the resistance welder and we are able to get in side these vent areas and just reach around the welder amperage and everything still the same it's just the two different tips that are making contact here's another version of attachment i have this machine has i believe it's six attachments total so these jaws you see they're able to get down the firewall and down the back side of these cow vent areas and just clean up I don't know if you saw earlier when we were welding, but this whole side vent area where the side cowl sat kind of low in the thing, I actually stitch weld it with the MIG welder around the top edge. And we're going to go back through and clean that up so it's smooth. So the top area, this cowl vent side piece, I didn't, I skipped with the resistant welder. The outside cowl vent will cover everything. So you're never going to see it when the car's all completely assembled. But this is just stuff you're going to have to expect when building these type of cars. Skipping ahead now, everything is welded underneath the dashboard, the down the sides of the dashboard, the whole cowl area, the side areas, the patch on the other side. So what we're going to do, uh, my choice tool here to sand everything down is going to be the belt sander. Personally, it does a really clean job. It doesn't scratch the metal like a grinding stone would. It's easier on me, and I can reach in in most areas. What else is good as I'm going back through, you see, I saw an area that I missed spot welding. So I'm looking, and I'm kind of focusing on anything else, and I leave the, the welder close by, and I just come back through and tack an area I missed. But there's nothing really to this. This is just uh, 80 grit is what I'm using right now. Sometimes I go over it with 120 grit or the DA right before we prime it um, but you're just basically sanding down the welds that's it uh, making them smooth try to keep the belt flat and like I said this is really good because I can reach in all different areas the belts are a little bit more expensive than you would on a grinding stone but personally I feel like in the out in the long run the outcome really does turn out better and easier to clean up in the bodywork stage Back on the Firebird, we got all the metal work ground down. You see, we got in this cow panel and we just smoothed everything out. At this point, now that all the metal work underneath, behind on what we've assembled, and I did test fit these cow, just the outer cow piece right here to make sure they did fit, but we're not going to install those yet. The next step in this process could be the dashboard. So the dashboard, if you look at GM cars, they actually have glue. Like you look at the old dashboard on this car, you could see where the glue set in the old dashboard so what we're gonna do you see I ground down the whole area and then I taped off a half inch area right where we're gonna glue this dashboard down we're gonna weld on the bottom we're using 3m panel bonding adhesive um, they comes and you use a special gun it's a two-part and it's got a mixing tips because it's gonna double up the area so I don't like leaving bare metal to bare metal. So what we're gonna try to make sure we do, we're gonna try to cover up this whole area with all the panel bond. At that point, it shouldn't rust. And this is what the factory did. This is what the 3M panel bond calls for. So you see it's mixing in the tip and I got gloves on. We're gonna be a little bit heavy on it and we're, I'm actually gonna put it on both sides. We're gonna put it on the dashboard and this has a, according to the directions, a 90 minute working time, but we're gonna try not to push that. So just running a bead on it. And I'm going to take, with my gloves, my finger, and smooth it out to cover up all the bare metal. And it's okay if we get a little bit on the bottom. 
We're trying not to get this in the welding area as best we can. It is actually flammable, so you could see we're actually going to let it be tonight. We're not going to do any more welding on the car, so this is kind of a timing thing that worked out perfect. So now that we got it on there, spilled a little on the floor, let's go ahead and get it on the dashboard. You see we're running in the same spot. I marked them in relation to each other with the screw hole that I put in. So these two areas should sit right on top of each other. And like I said, the main reason we're doing both sides is just to make sure we cover all the bare metal with this panel bonding adhesive. Now, the reason you get it down to bare metal is you don't want some paint and stuff on there that might not adhere properly and the panel bonding adhesive won't work then if the paint, its substrate basically comes off. Now once we take the tip off and put the cap on, this panel bonding adhesive, the tip's no good. Every time you, it dries, you gotta get another tip. But minus that, and I did get an area right there, it'll be okay. But like I said, we'll be able to use this panel bond adhesive again in the future. I'm just gonna have to get another tip every time it dries. All right, so we're gonna put this on the side. I'm gonna take off the glove. All right, and now Chase is gonna help me. We're gonna put this on the car. Lift it up. Watch the glue on the bottom. Is it in there? It's a tight fit, which is good. All right, we got a couple spots we're gonna have to clean out tomorrow that did kind of move over, but we're gonna put a couple clamps on, actually, grabbing the screws. We'll shoot one screw in each side as our reference point first, so I know the dashboard's level, straight. All right, so we got our two reference screws in. So we're gonna clamp it down as best we can right here without denting it. And then we're gonna shoot a bunch of screws through it. These clamps were not tight at all. They're basically just holding the dashboard, the center down while we go screwing it in place. Now you see I'm pre-drilling my screws. I know they are self-tapping screws, but with the glue being under there, sometimes the self-tapples will try to lift up the dashboard. So by pre-drilling them, I make sure they're going in clean and I'm not moving the glue around because at this point, it's pretty much set in stone where it wants to go. So we're trying not to move it at all. All right, so basically we're going to stop right now. I'm going to finish doing this. We've got to hit this corner down and everything else, so I don't want to keep you on the whole time. You see some of the panel bond did come through our screw holes. It seeped down. I put a lot on there. That's not a problem. I'm going to take a wire brush on a drill tomorrow after it dries, and we're going to clean out the holes as we weld them up. Like I said, we knew we weren't going to weld tonight. This is why we don't want the wet panel bond around our area. So we'll clean them up. Hand me the two the white brackets down there. And what we're going to do, the dashboard's also sagging right now. These Camaros and Firebirds, the dashboards like to come up. I'm usually about an inch and a half from the, the, the door light, the dome light hole to the bottom of the dashboard. So what we're going to do, I got the brackets prepped, everything. We're going to basically clamp them on the dashboard there and there on the corners. And we're going to lift it up to that quarter inch. The glue's going to be held down so we're not fighting the glue. And then we'll finish welding the dashboard. Then we'll come back and we'll start working on the seam sealer. So we're going to call it a night on this one. And we'll come back tomorrow for the rest of this install. Here's a couple pictures of the brackets underneath the dashboard and how they are installed and hold the dash. You see we got two on the side and one in the center. I just welded them and we'll go back up and clean them. Right now you could see I'm going to throw my first coat of epoxy primer on this whole everything we just assembled right now just to clear it up, seal it up because a lot of this area we're not going to be able to access once we put the side covers on. So like I said now it's just easier to put the epoxy on 
let it sit for a while and I realize some of it will be recovered again in epoxy down the road. But the areas we can't reach, they'll be sealed up for the future. So you see we got our first coat of epoxy primer laid down on the whole area just to protect all the bare metal and seal it up. What we're gonna do before we put our second coat on there, we're gonna put some seam sealer. What we're gonna do, this cow panel, basically I told you earlier in the video, the water runs down it. So we wanna mostly focus on this seal on the firewall and go into the side vent pieces. You wanna do it now because realistically, if we put this side piece on, you can't reach up in there. I mean, you can, but it's gonna be very hard to get a good clean seam sealed location on there. No one's really gonna see this, but we know we're trying to make the car waterproof, everything else. What I'm also gonna do too, obviously is one piece, but I'm gonna run my seam sealer down this edge because I did weld right here. I just don't want to leak. We're going to seam seal the other side when the car is all said and done, but it's going to give us extra protection and I don't want water getting behind it. So we're going to just run the bead from the top, keep going down and same thing with this area in the front. So that's where our seam sealer is going to go. It's not going to be nothing crazy. We're just going to cut a hole in the tube and we're going to just start applying it in between the tape. And I'm going to be a little bit heavier. No one, like I said, no one's going to see this area. I'd rather have that little bit extra seam sealer in there. And especially once we paint over this in the next hour, prime over this, it's really going to be sealed up pretty good. Up here, there's another area we want to really focus on, on the top behind there. All right, so now that we got all the seam sealer in there, gonna run our finger down. And there's, man, there's so many techniques on how to do seam sealer, and how to make it clean and what you like. Just pick your, pick your poison on the seam sealer. But this way, since like I said, no one's gonna see it, I'm gonna be extra heavy with it. We're gonna peel it off. And once we epoxy prime it, I know it should be pretty good. So actually I got some paper towels. I did put a little bit excess on. All right, now the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a brush and just kind of just wipe over it one more time just to even everything out. If I'm seam sealing an area of the car that I know people are gonna see, uh, for instance, in the trunk area, things like that, I know I'll just use a little bit of the seam sealer a lot less and then what I'll do I'll go straight to the brush a lot of times I won't use my finger we just put so much excess on there that I use my finger to basically cut out the edges and then brush it at the very end again this is a technique that is adapted through many different people so pick a way that works for you all right, so we're still leaving the tape on these areas because that's where our weld through primer is. I'm gonna let this dry for an hour. I'm gonna do the other side, get some fresh gloves on it, and we'll come back through, put our second coat of epoxy, and then put up our, our side outside covers here. Before we put our outer cowl panel on, you could see we have our second coat of epoxy covering our seam sealer, and we removed the tape and exposed all the weld through primer, and everything's looking really good. So at this time, we're ready to weld up and install this cowl panel and seal everything off on the inside of the, that area. So you could see I'm using lots of clamps and I'm just making sure everything's tight. I'm working my way from the bottom of the panel, working my way up and kind of just pushing the panel where everything fits tight and is pushed in. Normally I would use my spot welder on this, but honestly I was just in the zone and I started just punching holes. So all in all halfway through I was like, well, we're committed to the welder. So you're going to see if you're at home, this is exactly how you would do it. You put some rosette holes in this thing and then start at the top with your clamps and run your MIG holes right down the side, making sure you have a really good tight uh, lap joint here. Um, using, you know, enough heat to penetrate it and you can look on the back side and make sure everything's coming through. And then once we go ahead and weld everything, we'll take the same, follow the same process as the rest of the car. I'll take the belt sander and just run down the whole edges to clean everything up. Turning our attention to the other side now, it's the same process. I'm going to just show you a little different on this side because you see I started putting the clamps on with this panel, but then when I got to the top, you could see the top wasn't pulled in enough. So I decided to remove the clamps, 
pull in the top tighter and now we can reclamp it that's the beauty of using these clamps versus drilling a bunch of screws and then now you have more area to you know have to weld up the holes the clamps are just as easy the vice grips to be able to remove adjust your panel in place and then go back and start welding so hopefully this helped and uh, stay tuned we'll close out the video all right, we're wrapping up the video on the 69 Firebird with the cow panel, the dashboard, and the side cow install along with the rockers. You see with the rocker panels, they're just screwed in place currently. They're not welded in. I told you in the beginning of the video that we're going to leave them screwed in until we really assemble the whole front end, the doors, and the rear end of this car. And then right before we start welding everything up, we're going to weld them first. So we could just, if we have to fine tune them, move them front and back just to make the car look you know better with the door gaps we'll go ahead and do that so all in all looking at this car with the epoxy coating i think it's really protected really nice the insides all covered we got the inside of these side cows all protected we got them seam sealed and then there's uh, two coats of epoxy primer on everything so we are going to recoat some of the epoxy on the car, but all in all, the sides that we can't get to, we know should last for years and years to come. I will have to clean up a little bit more on these side cow pieces um, and then put some paint on the side of them just to protect them to keep them from rusting, but we'll save that for another day. On the future build on this car, we're going to go ahead, we're going to assemble the fenders. We're gonna assemble the hood and we got the doors. All this was already test fit on this car and set in place. So I really think it should go back on in the next video pretty easy. The reason we do this and the reason I think you should do this at home is you never know with the fenders if your dash is the right height or anything and that could lead to a lot of trouble in the future. So if you can test fit the most amount of parts you can realistically i recommend it we're at a good stopping point where we worked our way forward we test fit everything and now we're going to assemble it all and then we're going to work on the back of the car once we put the front end on this car it's going to be really exciting because i think that's where the car's character in the 69 firebirds actually going to start showing through versus any uh f gen uh first gen f body uh this process on what we're doing on this car is going to be the same for really all the first gen f body Body cars uh, it's gonna be close to the second gen uh, F body cars with the Nova's I mean they're uh, most GM cars or removable clips are the same so hopefully this video is helping you out if you're building one of these cars if you're not building one of these cars I think a lot of metal work and the tips and tricks we're showing translates real well no matter if you're building a Mustang a Camaro um, a Nova a Cuda you know a B body you know Mopar so hopefully these helped I welcome constructive uh, criticism, feedback on things we could do better on the channel, processes that you might help me out in you know, make, making something easier. Feel free to message me on that. So uh, thanks again. If you like our videos, comment on them, subscribe to our channel, please, and like our videos. And till the next time, I'm Rick from Cartage Classic Cars.